I know this is controversial and you might want to judge me, but I can say that I was quiet quitting before it ever became a thing, before it was ever called that. What we're really talking about here is disengagement. And I want to talk about why it's happening, what it is, and why so many parents are doing it or are considering doing it. Is it a good idea? You know, I come from the corporate world. I was in a corporate marketing job before I became a parent coach. And there were many different things that were adding up that really created disengagement in me. And this is really a call to action for so many different companies. And so I want to share with you my thoughts on the work side of things and also the family side of things. And before I dive into this, I want to invite you to subscribe to my channel. My mission is to provide you with modern solutions and strategies to help you with day-to-day -day family life, day-to-day -day family problems and battles and frustrations you have. I especially love talking about kids that are difficult and strong-willed, kids that are hard to parent. Maybe they have a diagnosis of ADHD or ODD, something like that, or they're just strong-willed and have really big emotions. That's my area of expertise. I happen to be raising a child just like that, so that's what I know a lot about. And I also love working with parents, especially moms, who are working and really trying to manage and balance, balance if that ever even exists, but balance that work life and family life. And I really love to talk about both and how to feel good, happy, and satisfied in your workplace and feel harmony in your home. So please do subscribe, hit that bell so you're notified every time I upload a video, which is weekly. And I really would love for you to check out the other videos that I have in my library. And I have so many more videos that I cannot wait to shoot. So I'm excited to share those with you in the future. Now, as a parenting coach, as a parenting expert, you might be wondering why I'm talking about this area with quiet quitting. And I just want to let you know that I actually have many articles published on this topic. There is an article on in CEO World Magazine where I talk about this. Also in Thrive Global, I've had articles in the Huffington Post as well and a full spread in Podcast Magazine. And Newsweek.com recently wrote an article exactly on my work that I do with businesses. So there's links in the description below if you want to check those articles out. I'm really proud of them and really proud to add my voice to this topic. And I want you to know Know that if you are a business owner or you work for a corporation and you want to bring somebody in to talk about the work and the family balance and how to get more, be more productive at work, but also get more harmony and understand your kids' behavior better so you don't bring stress of home to your work, then you might want to consider inviting me in to speak to your company. You can find out all the details at robinmcmahon.com. And the link, of course, is in the description below. Quiet quitting is this new term that we've heard recently, and it really became popular through TikTok. And now we're seeing it mainstream, right? There is an article that I'm going to reference uh, from parents.com and Dr. Phil just had an episode about it in, at the end of September. And it really refers to employees who are simply doing the job description, the job they were hired for within the amount of time they're given to do it. No more, no less. And that means that they're not working extra hours, they're not putting in extra effort, and they're not going above and beyond. The pandemic has changed so much in terms of the workplace. We've seen the great resignation, right? And now we're seeing quiet quitting, and the issue really isn't so quiet. It's actually pretty loud. And what we're seeing, the loudest group, is the Gen Z group, which is people who were born between 1997 and 2012. They are not impressed. And they're the ones who are sounding the alarm the loudest. So if you're a parent, is quiet quitting for you? In a 2022 Gallup poll report called The State of the Workplace Globally, there are some really interesting findings that are of note. One is that 50% of employees identify as being stressed. And working women in the US and Canada were among the most stressed globally. 
Listen up, moms, that's you. Now, one out of five employees are experiencing anger and one out of five employees are experiencing sadness. And that's not good for anybody. That's certainly not good for productivity and it's not good for the company or the bottom line. So let's talk about why this is such a big topic among parents, especially moms. It really comes down to the mental load that we have. And for parents in general, it's huge when you're working and you're raising a family. According to an article in parents.com written by Beth Ann Mayer, she talks about this mental load saying that the parent carrying most of the mental load is typically a mom in a heterosexual couple. That they are doing more parenting without even noticing. And this includes examples like keeping track of when it's your turn to do the orange slices for the next soccer practice, or when your child needs to have their permission slip sent in for the next field trip, or remembering when their immunizations are due and scheduling that appointment with the pediatrician and then getting them there and arranging who's going to do it and when they're going to do it. And the result of having this kind of stress studies are showing that the consequences are huge, that mothers experience more family guilt, but they're also less happy and more stressed. And that again is not good. When you have high levels of stress, that is what leads to burnout. And burnout is very, very difficult to recover from. Now that things are pretty much back to normal and we're out of the pandemic, it's really allowed us to shine a light on our work life and our family life and what it's costing us. And the reality is, is that keeping up this kind of hustle, this kind of pace, it's costing you mentally, emotionally, and physically. Here is the most important thing. Our kids are watching and they're listening. And this is why we need to talk about this topic. This is why I'm talking about this topic because we're modeling for them not only what a good work ethic is, which is important, but we're also modeling for them what our boundaries are and what whether or not we're holding boundaries as it relates to work. And most of us come home exhausted and we're disengaged as well. And our kids are noticing and they hear us. They hear us complain about our workloads, complain about our frustrating bosses and our toxic work culture. And remember, when we are stressed and we're bringing stress into the home, our kids are stressed. When we're stressed, our kids are stressed. And when they're stressed, they can't scroll through social media. They can't have a glass of wine. No, they act out in ways that we don't like in behavior we want to change. And that makes us more stressed. So it is a constant giving and receiving of stress that again, isn't good for anyone. So if you're contemplating quiet quitting or you're already doing it, we need to look at why, why are you doing it? Is it because you're unfulfilled? Is it because you're burnt out? Is it because the job just isn't a fit for you anymore? Or maybe it is a mismatch between your boss or the work culture. Or maybe you feel that no matter how hard you work, you're not going to get any more money. You're not going to get any more recognition or even a promotion. Because our kids are watching, we need to get clear on why we're quiet quitting and we need to make some changes. So in the comments below, I want to ask you to answer this question. What is it that is the most or the biggest stressor for you? Is it the work part of your life? Is it the home part of your life? Is it both? And why? please let me know. I'd love to know more about this. And with your comments, I will respond to all of them. And I really want to hear where you're coming from, because of course, your feedback is what allows me to create videos that are more and more relevant for you. Next, I want to talk about what we can do, but I also want to talk about what companies need to do, because if changes aren't made, this is going to keep continuing and we really need to work together to bridge this gap so we don't have unhappy employees and toxic workplaces and companies that really aren't thriving. So here's what we can do. In large part, because our kids are watching and listening and because they're the future of the workforce, we need to put some boundaries in place. And we can put boundaries in place that simply are what time we're going to start, and what time we're going to end. Now, this may seem oversimplified,
but it really isn't. It actually helps you to be more productive and more focused during your day. And it does because what we're doing is we're using Parkinson's law, which says that the time needed to get a project done expands based on how much time you actually give it. So in other words, if I give myself an afternoon to finish a report, it's gonna take me that afternoon. If I give myself two weeks, it's gonna take two weeks. If I give myself a month or have a month, it's gonna take a month. We're always sort of working towards the deadline, right? And so what happens is if we have a time that we're gonna be done our work day, that is sacred, that we look at as a non-negotiable time, like as soon as it's five o'clock, we're done, what happens is we're going to work throughout our day. We have our list of work that needs to get done. And around, let's say two o'clock, we kind of look at the time. We see how much work we have done. And then we start to hustle. Like I've got this much work to do and I've got this much time. I better hustle to get it done so I can get my work done by the time I need to be done work. That's so important. And it really does help us stay more focused and be more productive. And I want to let you know that at the end of this video, I'm going to suggest you watch another video that I recorded that is exactly all about this. And it's really about how to stop the spread of stress from your work life to your home life so that your kids don't feel stressed, but so that you also have more harmony at home. And when you have more harmony at home, you're going to show up to work more rested, more resilient, more focused, more productive, and that is good for everyone. So please do watch that video at the end. Now with these boundaries, it's important for you to communicate with your boss. Now that in and of itself may cause you a lot of stress having to have this kind of conversation, but you can do it in such a way where it doesn't make you look bad, where you can say, I am happy to respond to your requests and your queries within 8 a.m. and 5 p.m., but because in the evening, I'll be with my family, I'm at my kids' sports, I'm with them for their activities, I won't be able to respond with the quality that you're used to receiving from me, so I'll respond to you in the morning. And I've seen people with out-of-office responses for that part of the day that says, thank you so much for your message, I will respond to you within 24 hours, or I'll respond to you in the morning. And I think that's a really professional way to manage expectations. So give that a try because that will really help you and it allows you to sort of take your power back. And unfortunately, we don't all have bosses or workplaces that allow us to speak freely and be transparent about the fact that we are a whole person. And that's really where workplaces need to make a change because we need to understand that people come to the workplace as a whole person person. And if things are happening in your home life, if there's incivility at home, if you're struggling with a child that has extra needs or may have a mental health crisis, there is no way that isn't going to impact you in your workday. So we do need to start seeing people as a whole person. Does this mean that you don't ever put in extra work? No, not at all. You could put in extra effort, extra hours, but you get to choose based on what's going on with you right now. If your family is really young, you might not have the extra time. And I'll tell you when uh, it was 2010 here, I had just had my second child. I had him in 2008. So I came back to work in 2009 and I went into working on the McDonald's sponsorship of the Vancouver 2010 Olympic winter games, huge opportunity. I was so excited to do it. I was so honored to do this work. And I was on two committees and one big job that I was tasked with, which was on top of the work that I was already doing, was to do the ticket allotment for the entire country. Because as a global sponsor back in those days, there was an allotment of tickets that staff was able to was able to get. Anyway, it was a huge job that I did. And I can tell you, my kids were so little, it almost killed me. It was so much. And by the end of 2010, I was so burnt out. I got really, really sick. I had pneumonia and I actually fell and broke my foot. So I was really forced to have to take time off and time away. And so would I do it again? Well, I don't know. I was really excited to do that extra work and to put in that extra effort, but the cost to me was pretty immense. And so that's what you have to decide. Is it the right time? Are you willing to give up some of your time and some of your family time? And does that make sense? And 
look, if you're really unhappy at your job, maybe it is time to find a new job. I actually know a lot of career coaches and people who can help to help you find a job that's a better fit. And so reach out to those people and find a place of employment that will honor you and will allow you to have the things in your life that you're looking for. It's also a good wake-up call for the companies that we're working with. And that leads me into talking about what we're seeing in the workplace. And in fact, the Gallup poll that I was referring to earlier says that employee well-being is the new workplace imperative. The report shows that well-being and engagement interact with each other in powerful ways, that when employees are engaged and thriving, they are significantly less stressed and have less anger and health problems. That's huge. But unfortunately, most employees remain disengaged with work. And the fact is, is that low engagement alone on its own costs the global economy $7.8 trillion. And the relationship between well-being and engagement is vital because how people experience work influences their lives outside of work, right? Stress is contagious. And so overall, well-being influences life and work. And organizations need to think of the whole person, not just the worker. And so leaders should add well-being measurements to their executive dashboards and prioritize ex employee well-being as part of their employer brand promise. Yes, it is important. We have to have employees that are happy and thriving in the workplace. And remember, the next generation is saying, no, I will not have you pay me little and expect so much from me. So that's why this conversation is happening right now. And that's why quiet quitting has really gained a lot of momentum. There is a lot more that I can say on this topic, including why nurturing women and moms in the workplace is good for business. And I do want to invite you to go to robinmcmahon.com. I do have some statistics there. I do have a full report on this exact subject to really help you to get clear on what's going on in the workplace and what employees are looking for. And again, if you are looking for this, if you have an employee engagement person in your office, if you have a program or a group that is all about work-life balance, I'd love to come and speak to your group and talk about the strategies that you can use to really stop the stress from work, from infiltrating your family, because the two are interconnected in so many ways. And what's good for your employee at home is good for them at work. And what's good for them at work is good for them at home. And those two things need to be talked about and we need to nurture that. So if you are watching this video and you are a professional and you are finding that it's really difficult to work and have a family, then please do look in the description below and book a call with me. It's a confidential call where we'll just talk about what your stressors are, what's going on in your family, and how I can help you to bring you less stress, more happiness, and more harmony in your home. So you can really show up as the parent you always thought you would be and have the family you always wanted. So please do that. And of course, please do subscribe to this channel. I am so excited to bring you videos on topics like this and other topics that are important to you. So please do subscribe to my channel and hit that bell to make sure you get notified every time there is a new video. And don't forget to watch this video on how to transition from working to being with your family. It is a game changer and you will love it. Thanks so much for watching.